To him, I will give power over the nations. Giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine. The Shalom, and in peace, may that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Now, obviously in Revelation 2, and I'll read it verbatim. Okay, and obviously we had the David Guzig, I believe it was Isaiah 63. Yeah, that he was going over. And he was, he's a, a famous theologian or scholar or scholar. A man that deals with the scriptures is meant to be a high level <laughs> so so called Christian. So we've got his commentary, I'm gonna go through it and see what he's got to say about some various matters. But you Christians are leaking oil if you ever had it. Like dry. No light. Anyway. Revelation two and twenty five. But that which you have already hold fast till I come. 26 and 27 and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end till him sorry to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them he shall rule the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father so who who are these people being given power over the nations right, the, the the ethnos the ethnosium so it says, Revelation 2, 26, 28, this is David Guzik in the Study Guide and Blue Letter Bible. He titled it, The Promise of a Reward. So it says, it's got the scripture, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, who shall rule them with a rod of iron, that shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I have received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. And I believe that's 29. Oh no, it's like 28 yet. Yeah. So we'll basically deal with 26 and 27. It says, He overcomes and keeps my works to the end. David Guzik says, Even when there is the immoral and idolatrous influence of a Jezebel, Christians can overcome and keep the Messiah's works until the end. We must not become overly discouraged at immor immorality. And idolatry around us, even among Christians. <laughs> Power's work will still go on through his overcomers. Now, this is the, the part I want to focus on B. To him will I give power over the nations. Now, it says here. And now I'm going to read that J word as the Messiah. She says, The Messiah promised that his people will reign with him. <clears throat> No, you're not wrong, Mr. David, but you're probably wrong about who you claim his people are. Matthew 1 and 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he will save his people from their sins. And I'm not sure of um, his Christology. So we've got Exodus uh, 18. And why I say that is because he might say, you know, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, is the Father. He might say he's one with the Father. He might say he did different things. There's different vari <laughs> variants of the same disease, the doctrinal disease that they hold. So Exodus 18 and 1. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that Yahweh had brought Israel out of Egypt. And obviously that's a... It runs on. Enjombament. Let's search my people Israel. Let's just put people Israel. Let's see if... That's, yeah, cool. So be merciful, O Yahweh, unto thy people Israel. Now it's redeemed, and lay not any innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven them. That was Deuteronomy 21 and 8. And let's see if there are... Um, 
There is Matthew 2 and 6, Now Bethlehem in the land of Judah are, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Amos 7 and, and uh, 15, And Yahweh took me as I followed the flock, and Yahweh said unto me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. So the Lord's people are Israel. Even that, Ezekiel 25 and 14. Now lay vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith Ha'adawan Yahweh. So read this bit again, that the Messiah promised that his people will reign with him. Here, there is a special promise to those who overcome the threat of immorality and idolatry, to them, Yahweh offered a share in his own kingdom. <clears throat> now what does that say? Daniel 7 and 18. It says, But the saints of the Most High should take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Psalm 15, 5, Psalm 148 and 14 confirms that the saints, in fact, are Israelites. So they'll be left to the saints... And not to other people. Where does it say that? Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall not never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. So it's not going to be left to other people. It's going to be left to the saints. And who are the saints? Psalm 50 and 5. <clears throat> Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The covenants, again Romans 9, 3 through 5. If I could wish it myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of power and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Hamashiach came whose overall power blessed forever Amman so it's still Jacob <laughs> so are you going to where are you going to try wiggle Christians into the promise Bear with me. Alright. 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 I, B, I. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. This quotation from Psalm 2 speaks of the authority of the Messiah when he rules over the earth. In that day, righteousness will be enforced, and those that who rebel against the Messiah will be dashed to pieces like a clay pot hit with an iron bar. The Messiah includes this here to give hope to the faithful Christians of Thyatira, who felt overwhelmed by the immorality and idolatry of, of sorry, immorality and idolatry all around them. The Messiah reminds them, "You're on my winning team." <clears throat> This is the word for rule, G-R poimene, means literally to shepherd. Their rule will not be simply that of executing judgment, but also that of administering mercy and direction. And let's fact check the word for rule. See, you, what they're saying, guide over. So it says, to feed, tender flock, keep sheep, to rule, govern. Of rulers to furnish past, pasture for food, to nourish, to cherish one's body, to serve the body, to need the to supply the requisites for the soul's need. So his breakdown of that is that he shall nourish them with a rod of iron. <laughs> An interesting one. Now let's see who this is speaking of, because it's talking about the nations. Let's see what that word is for nations. It says, "Some turn ask of me." 
And I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance in the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The heathen is Gawai. There's a nation, people, nation, people, usually of non-Hebrew people, of descendants of Abraham, of Israel, of swans, of locusts, other animals, fig, meaning figuratively. Goyim, question mark, nations? We don't have a question mark after nations. We yeah, so Gawai, the plural is Gawayam. So if we look in this, there is Gawayam. So that's the plural. Obviously the, the normal word, or the singular rather. Gawai, you had the M, because the Yam together would make that plural. Gawayam, nations plural. Let's see what David's got to say about this. You get this, you go uh, commentaries. Right, from two to nine, cool. It says God's decree to the nations, the decree of the Son. It says, I will declare the decree. Yahweh has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. And before we go there, I want to see it in here, because he, he knew it was from Psalm 2. So it says, it doesn't seem to say anything about pasturing here, or being a pasture, on gently nourishing them with a rod of iron. Rayai. This is to be bad, be evil, to be displeasing, to be sad, to be injurious, be evil, to be wicked, be evil, ethically, to do an injury or hurt, to do evil or wickedly, mischief participle, to break, shatter, quell, to break, broken participle, to be broken, hith palel, to be broken, broken in pieces, broken asunder. And there, there are all the KJ usages there. It doesn't sound like nourishing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all read all that. I think. You should break them with a rod of iron. You should dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. So it says, I'll declare the decree. The following passage indicates that this is Yahweh's anointed himself speaking. He would declare the decree that power the Father spoke to him. You and my son today have begotten you. The Lord's anointed recalls what power the Father spoke to him, identifying him as the son of the Father, and emphasizing his standing as the begotten of the Father. Now this, this is not what I want to focus on, so I'm not going to read all of that. He's going into his, his trinity doctrine and all that. But we will continue on to see, which reads, I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. It says, The Lord's anointed holds the nations as his inheritance. He will rule over all nations and all judgment is committed to him. But why? We don't make much reference to the idea of all the nations. Why are all these nations under, under well, he is an Israelite man. As well, isn't that quote unquote racist? No, no, it's it's not about race. It's just about it's just it's. Just, I want to make you think it's just a coincidence that the Lord didn't set up a lineage there on purpose. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, I says Revelation eleven and fifteen describes an exciting consummation of this inheritance and the seventh angel sounded a loud voice in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord and of his anointed and he shall reign forever and ever all right d there's not much going on there is it doesn't really explain it much d you shall break them with a rod of iron the lord's anointed has such power over the nations that they're like clay posts that he can shatter with a blow from a rod of iron this shows why it's so foolish for the nations to defy the Lord and his anointed. There's no reason, no benefit to their defiant opposition. Right, fair enough. But but why why I'm there? Because 
as such as Matthew 19 and 28, And Yahushua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit upon, sorry, shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now why didn't he pick a Hamite, a Canaanite, already a Canaanite is a Hamite, but why didn't he pick a Cushite, a Hamite, an Elamite, a Moabite, an Ammonite, and all the other, all the other ites? Why is it still Israel? Even that in itself, even that in itself, even that in itself is enough to say, <laughs> if we taught this, which is the outline, they're not really filling in the blanks. They're leaving, they're purposefully omitting certain details and certain ting and ting. But if we taught this, like, well, wow, why is it, why is it only that? But these are what the scripts say, man. So even David Guzig, he has to cede to some bits. <laughs> but Shalom, that's all I've got. Shalom, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai Barakthah. Kahala, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai.